Hey, what's up everybody, Pastor Mark. Hope you're having a fantastic Thanksgiving week. I wanted to run through kind of a weekly roundup of stuff that we should talk about real quick. I promise I'm gonna try to keep it short, but I wanna tell you just some real quick announcements. I wanna talk to you about preparing your heart for this coming weekend. I wanna give a, a bit of a fiery uh, encouragement about attending church and also have a special announcement coming up at the end that I'll save for everybody that makes it all the way through. I need a little bit of help, but I'll save that for the end. First, um, if you haven't heard about The Grove, The Grove is the community of small groups that we're trying to pioneer for next semester. I did a little video about it. I want you to know about it before we get into December because we're gonna start signing up for it. There's a video linked at the end of this video where you can find out more about that. Second, if you are kind of new to the church or definitely if you're new to Christ and you haven't been baptized, I want to encourage you to check out the video on baptism that I do at the end of this. There's a link at the end of this video. It's not really long, but it'll give you the, kind of the why behind the what. Like, what's the big idea with baptism? Why are we doing this? It seems a little strange. Everyone's getting all wet. Um, if you ever, even if you have been baptized, you just want to understand it a little bit better. It's not real long, but I think it'll be profitable to your soul to understand it. Let's talk about preparing your heart for this coming weekend. So we're in this Understanding the Time series still. We're talking about what's going on in the world. And maybe you've felt at some point like, man, why is everybody always so entitled? It seems like people just, they just assume they deserve certain things. Why is that? Well, a really important question. It's true that that is going on in the culture. It's easy to see it in other people. It's a little more difficult to see it in us. And so we're going to go to God's Word this coming weekend. And we're going to learn what does God say to us about entitlement out there, but maybe even more importantly about entitlement in here. So I want to encourage you, um, if this helps you to prep for the weekend by studying the passage a little bit, let's go ahead and go to John 17 over your study over the next few days. Check that out. Check out verses 7 through 19. You could check out around that, but that's the chunk of what we're going to be talking about this weekend. It's all good. It's all God's Word, so feel free to move around the cabin, so to speak. But um, that's what we're going to be talking about. It's going to be really, I think, helpful. I, th I think it, it'll, it'll be sobering in a good kind of a way. So we're going to talk about that. Feel free to be praying about that one, um, not only for yourself, but for me, for the preaching, for everybody else that's attending. Really important. Um, lastly, before we talk about the special announcement, can I just talk to you real quick about attending church? You know, over the past few years, I've been wrestling with how much do I lean in with people and tell them to go to church? Surely there's been difficult situations. There's people that can't go to church. <clears throat> Some of you might be in that position and you've just been so blessed by the digital service. I, I love it, man. Thank God that we can do that. I'm really excited because we're coming to a stage where that's going to become more live coming up here real soon. But either way, it's still very helpful. So that's really important. It's really good. Even so, for those who aren't in that position where maybe they need to for health reasons, there's just this thing about going to church that God is super clear about that we're sometimes under-concerned about. Let me say it in a little different way. Sometimes we neglect the Word of God preached together, <clears throat> and we do so to our detriment. So you want to give everybody grace, but also as your pastor and as a preacher have to tell you that God's Word says, yeah, there's consequences for that for sure. Like, don't even think for a moment that there's not. We're kind of like in a consumeristic men, you know, mindset mentality in our culture. So we're saying, oh, I just kind of go when, when I can. Can I just tell you, if you're going to be a mature disciple, you're not going to want to do that. You're going to want to prioritize God's word for show because you need it because God's word is leaking from you more than you think it is. Listen to this in Hebrews chapter 2. The writer says, we must pay the most careful attention. To what we've heard, God's word, <clears throat> saying you have already heard it, you know it. It's not that you haven't heard it. So that we do not drift away from it because we do drift. You have a little drain, <clears throat> excuse me, at the bottom of your heart. And every day, God's, work, God word, God's word leaks out of it. And it happens whether you like it or not. But then he goes on to make a warning. He says, for since the message spoken through the angel in the past, meaning the angel that spoke God's law to Moses, <clears throat> revealed God's ways to the Israelites. 
He says, it was binding in every violation and disobedience received its just punishment. How shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? He's saying, hey man, they were just under the old covenant. They didn't even know about the glory of Jesus. And there were still consequences for neglect of God's word. They experienced real negative things in their life because they weren't hearing God's word in order to obey it with faith. You and I need to have little habits in our lives, little word encounter habits. That's really what the weekend experience is. It's not the only word encounter habit that we should have, but it is definitely a primary word encounter habit. We need word encounter habits because the word leaks from us and we need to be regularly stirred up and reminded, oh yeah, God's word says that. I knew that I had heard that, but I've been drifting from it. You ever had that experience where you're, you're hearing God's word afresh and you're like, oh, I knew this. I This is People are like, what did you learn? Like, well, I, I kind of already knew it, but but now I'm, I'm hearing it again and it's kind of a fresh word for me. Well, here, here's the truth. That happens more than maybe you even know. In other words, you're forgetting more than you think you are. And when you and I forget, we forget to obey. And when we forget to obey, there are negative consequences in our lives. And so it's not me just saying this. It is the writer of the book of Hebrews saying, hey man, look, there's consequences. For those who know better and neglect God's word, coming into them as a word habit, um, they're going to miss all kinds of things and there's just consequences that God allows into our lives because we were neglectful of God's Word. Every week, I line up my my vitamins. I like the word vitamins because Bear Grylls says it. I think it sounds cooler. My vitamins. Line them up every week. Got to take my vitamins. Now, the reason I have to do it is because it's a habit. I won't take my vitamins. If I don't have it with my coffee, at 6 a.m. or wherever I'm having that, whenever I'm having that, I just, dude, there's nothing in me that wants to take vitamins. You know what I'm saying? I just have to. So I have to create an event where I'm going to ingest vitamins so that I have all the healthy things going on inside of me. The Word of God is the same. I know that we know the Word. You know the Word. Yeah, you know some, but you need Word event vitamins to always go in because there's going to be times where it lays, there's times where we miss or whatever. And honestly, the weekend experience is not the only one. I need other Word events in my life that I need to regularly like put in my way. So boom, I encounter that Word. So it's constantly cleansing me, constantly causing me to think differently, constantly convicting me. What the writer is saying is, Y'all need this more than you think you do, so be careful. Be careful not to drift from it because it's really how you progress and your reward in this life and in the afterlife is different when you don't neglect it than if you do. So I want to just lovingly encourage everybody, hey man, if you've, if you've made church optional, I just want to tell you as a, as a fellow human who speaks for God to you in, in some, some way, that's a very bad idea. You need to have consistent things that are in your way, so to speak, word habit events that are you're just going to hit so that God can, uh, in, in, in not just a feeling-centered way, not just you led by your feelings, God is consistently boom, 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 hitting us with the word. There's a lot of other reasons to go to church, but that is a primary and major way. So can I exhort you? Hey, man, don't miss church. Like, don't do it. I, it's not that there's not grace. It's just that it's not wise. You're smarter than that. Be wise and prioritize God's word because he's super clear, man. Hey, there's consequences if you don't do this. Let me tell you um, before we go, we're talking about something in January that we just want to call return of the donuts, okay? Sunday morning is better with donuts. We've had food in the past and there was financial reasons we couldn't continue that, but we found a way to do it without a big old financial investment. But what we need is people to help us serve the donut. So if that is of interest to you, if you would love to see Sunday morning go a little bit different, where there's more fellowship experiences, where there's donuts and coffee available, we just need your help. If, you're, if you have margin on Sunday morning, if you're already not doing something, would you let me know, get a hold of me, email me, you know, see me in the hall at church, flag me down on the road. Can't promise it's me just because they shaved their head doesn't mean it's actually me. Um, that might be awkward if it's not me, but find a way to let me know, hey, Carter, I'm down with Return of the Donuts. I want to help make that happen. I think that'll bless not only um, you, it'll bless a lot of other people in our church. That's all I've got for you today. Hey, I love you so much. Happy Thanksgiving. I'm super so thankful for you. Talk to you guys later.